Hi, I'm Anne of All Trades, and I think it's about time we plant this garden. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Right here we've got a mound of Tennessee clay and sawdust from Greg Pennington's workshop in the pathways. The sawdust helps to grab moisture when it rains and release that slowly into the soil. And as the sawdust breaks down, it will also add nutrients into the soil. We'll keep adding sawdust as often as we get it and that'll help suppress weeds in the pathways. In the process of trying to turn this Tennessee clay into some fertile soil, we are going to use a process called Hugel culture. And that's a German term that basically uses rotting wood and other nutrients to build up the soil. I'm giving myself a little bit of a head start with the Hugel culture method because instead of using actual rotting logs, I'm gonna use rotting wood chips. These are wood chips that I got delivered over the winter that have already started to decompose. As you can see here, my donkeys have also started to add their own additions as well, amendments if you will. Another quick thing I want to point out about using wood chips in the garden is that wood chips basically act like a sponge. The fibers soak up water when it rains and then they dry out and release that moisture slowly. So even though these top layer of wood chips are super, super dry because the sun's been beating down on them all day, just below the surface, it is still extremely moist in there. This method builds up the soil structure into a giant sponge. Because it holds moisture so well without becoming waterlogged, you'll find yourself needing to water your garden way less. In fact, after doing this in my garden in Seattle for five years, last year when we had a super long drought, I only ended up having to water my garden two times the entire summer. On top of the wood chips go aged compost from the barn. Now, granted I just moved here so it hasn't had very long to age, but it's been a while so we're gonna go ahead and use it. We have some kind of invasive grub here, so every time I find these, I save them for my chickens. Here's an interesting point to make about why we use what we use. This is a mushroom growing in the compost pile and any kind of mycelium or fungal growth, um, earthworms, all of these things are fantastic additions to our garden soil. So anytime I see those, I'm just like, yeah. If there's any excessive clumps of uncomposted hay, we're just gonna go ahead and move those to the side. First, because uncomposted hay tends to have a lot of seeds in it, so that ends up, you know, putting extra weeds that you don't want in your garden. But Putting it off to the side like this is actually gonna help even retain more moisture and be another other kind of weed barrier, even though it may sprout its own weeds. But we'll just get this kind of smoothed out here, broken up, and then get the next layer. On top of the barn compost, we want to add ready to use soil. This is actually super boosted soil because it is from my friend's fish composting uh, area. So it is actually extra, extra fertile, which is great because one thing that I should say about the wood chips is that if they're really fresh wood chips, as they start to decompose, they're going to want to take a lot of nitrogen and other nutrients out of the soil initially, but as they then decompose, they'll add stuff back. But we want to add extra nitrogen in at the beginning. So that's again, why we're doing the barn compost while we're putting in super, super rich soil, then we're going to finish off with compost plus mulch. So that's a 60 per, do you mind? That's a 60% compost to 40% composted mulch ratio, which will do exactly what we want on the top of the garden, which is keep the moisture in without making it too dry. As we get ready to plant our beds, there's one more quick thing we have to do. Here I have a packing box. A, you'll notice a common theme since we just moved and we have such a vast array of them. I have used it to collect some rainwater. The reason I've collected rainwater rather than just filling it up with the tap is because Tennessee has a ton of chlorine in their water and that's not a huge problem. It's just that I want to use as many natural things as possible. Rainwater tends to have a lower pH so go figure, we're gonna use this. Another thing when I'm doing transplants is I like to add some vitamin B supplement and I will include a Amazon link to this below. 
this helps basically just give the plant a vitamin boost right when you plant it. And that helps the transplanting process to just go a whole lot more smoothly. So we're gonna just put a little bit of this in there. Then we're gonna take the flat and put it in. I've also rigged up this little system here to keep the plants shaded from the sunlight so that they don't get stressed prior to doing this. I should also mention what time of day it is. We are fast approaching the evening and I really prefer to transplant plants in the evening because A, the temperatures are starting to cool. You're not planting in the heat of the day so that it further stresses the plants. But if you plant them right before dark, then they get a full 12 hours of peace basically before the sun starts beating down on them again. The only other better time to plant is right before it rains because then obviously they're gonna get watered into the soil. And then the very last thing that goes on top is this 60-40 composted mulch. It's 60% compost, 40% mulch. And you'll notice that these mulch pieces are a lot smaller than the arborist chips I was using over there. And we want that for the top because not only are they going to leach nutrients to the soil below, the wood chips on top are gonna to keep it dry, but because they're mixed with this composted soil, it won't keep it too dry and heat up the bottom of the bed to the point that it dries it out even further. Hi, you puppy. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah, you're such a good girl. Hi. You gonna come fast? A huge shout out goes to Squarespace for their continued support of my channel, which makes making videos like this possible. I've been using Squarespace to host my website since I started my business in 2012. It is a fantastic platform for people who are not super tech savvy like me to create stunning websites using their templates and designs. All I have to do is drag and drop my content into their template. The thing that I love the most about my Squarespace site is the easy integration with other social media sites like Instagram. So that when I don't have time to keep my site super well updated, it's constantly pulling stuff from my Instagram feed and showing them on my homepage of my website. If you're interested in starting your own website to showcase some photos for potential clients or start a blog to share the things that you're interested in with a wider audience or even sell things online, head on over to Squarespace and check out what they've got. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Anne of All Trades. That's squarespace.com slash Anne with an E of All Trades for a 10% discount. Once you've got the bed prepped, it is time to plant it and start growing things. I like to put a few marigolds in most beds that I plant because they are a bit of a pest deterrent, quite frankly, because they smell bad. We're gonna use this mostly for some herbs and spices. So we are going to just put a couple of these around Plus, they look really good too. So we pull them out. We wanna really gently break up their roots. Got some other herbs here, some basil, different kinds. What we wanna do is just get down into that dirt underneath the mulch there. Then we'll pull this upside down, use our hand to support it as it comes out. Really gently break up these roots. This one's pretty well soaked already. Then we'll push the dirt back, push the soil back around it. The only real advantage to using starts or plants that were started in a greenhouse before you put them out in your garden is that you get a head start. You have a already present plant to put into the soil and that will help you out with spacing. When you're using seeds, you're not always sure which ones are gonna germinate or which ones are gonna come up or necessarily where. This helps you to remember where it is because you can literally already see it. And some plants like basil, for example, take a long time to grow to this height. And be if you're in a place that has a short season or you were planting later than you usually would, it's a great idea to get these as starts so that you don't waste too much of your growing season waiting for those seedlings to get large enough to use. Thyme is one of my favorite things to put on steaks and pork and other things when I'm grilling them. That's something I learned from one of my really good friends, Kate, the modern day settler. Here's some lemongrass. This is another one of my 
absolute favorites. This one can get a little out of control, so we may have to move this one eventually, but for right now, this is gonna be a great spot for it. Here's some oregano. I'm actually going to put this in the side of the bed because oregano likes to creep, and so I wanna use this to uh, hold in the bedside. Right here I've got a couple cucumbers, and I like to plant things that will creep in the side of the beds because then that allows us to make better use of our pathways. Little side note about cucumbers is they don't like to have their roots messed with. So we don't break these roots apart like we do with some of the other ones. In the very center, there's still a little spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a pepper in it. Here's something pretty special. These are all dahlia tubers. These are a technically annual, but can be perennial plant if you save the bulbs every year, which is exactly what I've been doing with these since my dad and I planted them for my wedding eight years ago. I have taken these bulbs from every house that I've moved to since we got married and replanted them in every garden in every new place. So this little guy is gonna go right here and grow me one of my wedding bouquet flowers in the herb garden as well. The only last thing we need to do now is water it really, really well. We've just added a whole bunch of organic matter. There's gonna be a lot of space for that water to soak in, and we wanna make sure that our plants that are just freshly planted get a nice drink, but that's it. It may not look like it at this point, but this bed is now done. We wanna leave plenty of space for all of these plants to grow out and be bushy and grow to their full potential. If you plant things too closely, then you're going to have competition for space inside the bed for their roots. You're going to have competition for sunlight from the plants. Some are gonna grow, grow tall and shade the others out and then they won't grow as well. So halfway through the summer, if there's still a few spaces in here, I'll go ahead and plop something in. But for right now, I know that this thyme is gonna grow. I know that this rosemary is gonna turn into a big bush here. I know that this pepper, Though it may be tiny right now, it will be mighty. It'll be about this big. That um, lemongrass is definitely gonna grow. I'm hoping this basil all wants to bush out in here. These'll creep, this'll creep. We've got a good start to our garden here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and for supporting my channel in that way. If you'd like to support me in other ways, there are links for my merchandise and my Patreon below. I hope you leave this video feeling challenged, inspired, and excited to get outside and to do things with your own hands as well. Cheers. That I spent a lot of my young life living in Asia. I speak fluent Chinese. Let me say that one more time. Speak fluent French. <laughs> Je m'appelle Anne. And that's why I use lemongrass.